Hello. <laughs> I saw the countdown and I ignored it. Uh, yes, what will we be talking about? We are going to be talking about magazines, uh, digital distribution in magazines. Again, this is something that I found really fascinating. Um, this whole moving towards digital, uh, moving towards electronic. Uh, if you haven't yet, watch the video that I posted with Tina Brown talking with uh, one of her employees uh, about Newsweek. You know, once, you know, I'm sure we all got it in high school and even before that, this was a big magazine before it became just all ads. Uh, she took over there uh, and some controversial covers, they talk about that and the thing, but when push comes to shove, something that she said that was very interesting was, you know, you even get rid of the printing, it still costs millions of dollars, I can't remember the totals, but it was millions of dollars to run this. It's very important you watch this video. Uh, and it's hard to say, okay, people are going to do this, reading is down as it is. If we look over here, and this is a really good source for you guys to look at um, from time to time if you need sources, it's pewinternet.org. It has a lot of good um, uh, studies on internet usage and tablet usage. This is from 2012. Um, and it's saying that a quarter of Americans own tablets now. And this was 2012. There's an actual, there's another one in here that shows that it jumped up even higher just after this holiday season, Christmas season. 25% of adults use, uh, use tablets. In the late summer of 2010, when they surveyed, only 4%. So in less than two years, a 21% increase. And now it's actually even higher. Uh, and it breaks down through a lot of different ages. If you look here, of course, uh, 18 and 29, 25%. It's kind of interesting that technology-wise, older, uh, 30 to 49, more. They have more of these. I think it's interesting only because you know they cost a little bit of money, obviously. So you know, we can afford that, uh, us in this age, <laughs> this age group. Um, enjoy this age group right here while you can, uh, but soon you'll be in this age group. Uh, it's funny. The, um, with more and more people just having this tablet in front of them, they can just look at, they open it up, all the things are there. There's this really good article I'm going to post where someone put it really well, and he said, why do I want to have a piece of paper in front of me, a magazine in front of me? I'm going to reach down and just grab a magazine here. Why do I have this magazine in front of me? Um, what is this? Adirondack Light. Where I can sort of just leaf through these paper things and see, uh, you know, an article on this guy you know, some other different house articles and stuff. Why do I want to be limited to this when I could go online and I could Google, um, you know, Adirondack builders and I could look at a huge gallery of their work. I could go to YouTube and look at videos of their of them woodworking. I could go to, uh, I don't know, all over the place and just find all sorts of things. Instead of looking at a whole bunch of ads, in small articles. Why not put this content in a digital format so when I'm leafing through it, I can click on a video, I can click on a link that takes me someplace else, I can click on an audio, I could download a PDF of how to make this drink, uh, which don't drink if you're under 21. Um, and even so, you know, it's unnecessary. So, why limit ourselves to paper when we can have a tablet? Uh, I've got my tablet right here. Uh, I use it all the time. I read magazines on it. I read uh, a little bit of newspaper stuff on it. I'm not a big newspaper person. But I get my news and my information through a tablet now. I don't pick up magazines. Well, here I'm actually watching something in a movie. But, um, that's for the next, the next few chapters down the line. I think we talk about movies. So 
why limit ourselves to that? But, well, here's the problem. Here's one thing we haven't worked out yet. We're used to so much things being free. Why am I going to pay for a magazine? Why? Why bother? Tina Brown herself also runs the Huffington Post, which is a great uh, news site, which I go to every day. Uh, it is an online newspaper. Its content is free. So why do I want to get the digital version of Newsweek when I can read good articles on the Huffington Post? But they have to make money. So how, so how do we do this? Is it strictly advertising? They can't pay the bills with strictly advertising. Is it uh, a subscription basis? Well, it better be a pretty cheap subscription basis because if I can get it free someplace, that's why I want it. Well, the content better be pretty good. Well, unfortunately, they, they can't afford to pay people to make good content because no one's subscribing. It's, it's a really, I would not want to be in this industry. When advertising used to sell these things, you know, you'd have a thick magazine, tons of ads. People, you know, they don't buy that stuff anymore. So I find it really fascinating. Um, here's something that, uh, here was a graphic that I thought was interesting. Uh, digital newspaper and magazine reading. Uh, as you can see here, it mentions the same thing. Uh, use of tablets and e-readers has doubled in a year. Okay. 15%, uh, this is a little bit older than that Pew thing, or it just could be the numbers are a little off just because that's how things are with some of these. 15% um, of adults now own a tablet, one or the other. Uh, readership of magazine and newspaper content on these devices has doubled. Um, 40%, 44% of tablet users read newspapers and 27 read magazines. Uh, readership of publishing material on, on little phones and things up 30%. Um, if, here's a question, is it all about price point? Because I think it's all about price point. Um, yes, there's something about going to Barnes & Noble and sitting down with a huge stack of magazines and just looking through them. Now, if they were digital magazines and I walked in and I had my tablet and then they all just sort of popped in there and I could leave through them, I would do that. It's like that now. I believe if you have a Nook and you walk into a Barnes & Noble, you have access to all the books that are in Barnes & Noble on your nook while you're in there, just like you could if you could pick one off the shelf. If you didn't know that, try it out. If I could have that content, I would use that content. I wouldn't bother with probably leafing through the paper, because who knows, they might have videos and, and PDFs and things I can, I can pull up and look at. So I think it's about price point, myself. Um, here is the, uh, I'm on the wrong section here, let me get to that. Here's the, um, the assignment in magazines. And I show that Pew study uh, right here because it was just really uh, amazing to me. And here's the, uh, the, the number amount. And I got a little typo there I need to fix. Um, Tina Brown was asked about covers because she had a lot of controversial covers. Uh, she was the one who, uh, I believe, spearheaded or got the Demi Moore cover that everyone was like, ah, but now everyone's like, it's a piece of art. Uh, Annie Leibovitz did. Um, he was like, geez, I couldn't save it, blah, blah, blah. He's saying here, I almost pointed with my pencil. I'll do it like this. Uh, There's no cover that could have saved that print edition. It costs $34 million a year, or thirty just to, just to print it before you even hire a writer or anything. Uh, so the economics just aren't there. So here's my thing. If we cut some of that number down, that printing number down, can some of that 43 million that's used to drive the beast of the machines to print things, to go forward like that into content and programming, you could create an amazing digital presence. But even if you create that amazing digital presence, why am I going to go to it 
if it's thirty dollars a year. Um, I guess I just, I guess like anything, it has to be worth it to me. It has to be worth it to you. Uh, is there a magazine that if it simply vanished, you would buy digitally? If it was digital, you would still buy it. Um, you know, maybe post a comment uh, to this to this board uh, if that was the case. Um, you know, I actually get digital um, photography magazine on my iPad because uh, I like to have it with me and I like to save it. And I tend to throw magazines away every few years. There's like a purge of magazines. I'm pulling from a pile of magazines over here that um, we use for like um, doing collages and things. And these are all the stuff that people have thrown away over the years. There's like two huge boxes of them. So if I keep digital photography magazines on my iPad, I have them and I can access them and I can look at them uh, and use them. So there's the other reason to go, I think, maybe digital. So take a look at the video I posted here. Uh, listen to the um, an NPR interview, which is also really good. That's taken from here. And work on your post. Uh, remember, substantive. At least like two pages in Word. I'm not going to give you a total page count, but at least two pages in Word. Um, a video, some links to some articles, and some photos. Minimum one photo. That's how you get full credit on a post. Okay? Um, I'll post a few more blogs that I think are doing a really good job. Not to sort of, I hope it doesn't embarrass people, but sort of so you can see what other people are doing uh, that, are, that I'm looking for. So uh, go ahead, work on your post. Uh, again, the, this post is due, let's look it up. Let's go to the, let's go to the boards. This post is due, and my password. That always helps. On February 27th. On February 28th, this will disappear. So get your posts in. Uh, I will be grading, of course, everything when I get back. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the lecture, and um, I will see you in a few weeks.